Hi everyone, so we're back with merchandising entries and we're using Kimmel Wigget and Kiesos Fundamentals of Financial Management book to attempt the necessary scenarios. Now, uh, first we went through an explainer video explaining the foundations of merchandising entries and then we did one example, 5-1a, where we solved under the conditions of a perpetual inventory method and now we're going to be looking at an example with periodic inventory method. And so basically we're going to be using problem 5-7a from the Kimmel Wake and Kiesa book. And um, as you can see over here, it says at the beginning of the current season, the ledger of Wilson Tennis Shop showed cash 2,500, inventory 1,700, and common stock 4,200. The following transactions were completed during April. We're going to be entering all of these transactions one by one into our journal. And so starting off with April 6th, so sorry, 4th. So we've got the 4th of April, purchased rackets and balls from Lowell Co. $860, terms 310 net 30. Now remember in periodic inventory, we do not have an inventory account because it's not being updated perpetually. What we do however have is a purchases account. So we'll do purchases, debit, by uh, $860, and we'll have an accounts payable, credit. $860. And as always, we like to note the name of the company that we're buying from or selling to. This helps along with the credit terms and conditions. This helps us to work ahead. Okay. Now on the 6th of April, paid freight on Lowell Co. purchase $74. So when we pay freight in our periodic inventory. It is a freight in debit for $74 and a cash credit for $74. On the 8th of April, we have sold merchandise to members $900 terms net 30. Now terms net 30 basically means that we're not giving them any discount if they pay before 30 days. We just require them to uh, pay their full bill within 30 days. So whenever we sell, that means uh, under the periodic inventory, essentially our entry is just going to be an accounts receivable to a sales revenue. And that's it. So we sold for $900. Okay. And again over here, because it's not a sale to a specific company, it's just to all our general customers. We don't actually have to note anything, but we're going to go ahead and write down customers. And our terms are net 30. Okay. On the 10th of April, received credit of $60 from Lowell Co. for a racket that was returned. So in the event of a return, basically we have a purchase return because that is our purchase. So we have a purchase, returns, and allowances. And against that, we've got a credit. So our, I apologize, we've got that the other way around. So we want to put purchase, returns, and allowances into our credit, and we want to decrease our accounts payable for the credit that we received. And so the credit received was $60, and so that's 60 debit and 60 credit. And this was again to Lowell Co. I want to note that over here so that when I have to calculate the net payment, I'm able to identify how much I owe to Lowell Co. in total. Then we can go down to the next page and we have over here. Okay, so on the 11th of April, on the 11th of April, apologies, sorry, that should be. 11th of April, purchase tennis shoes from Volker Sports for cash, $300 when we make a purchase, that'll be against purchases, and in this case, because it's to cash, so we put in cash, and this is Volker Sports, and I don't have any credit terms to note here, because it is a cash purchase, so it's a $300 debit, and that's a $300 credit. Then on the 13th of April, we have... Um, on the, yes, on the 13th of April, we paid Lowell Co. in full. And so if we see, we've made the purchase from Lowell Co. on the 4th of April, and then we also made a return to them on the 10th of April. But within 10 days, we're able to pay them, so that means we'll be able to avail a 3% discount. And in this case, when we make a payment, then we are going to reduce our accounts payable, 
And against this, we're going to have a credit of cash, sorry, cash, and we'll also have a purchase discount in this particular case. So this is for Lowell Co. And for Lowell, the entry will be our original purpose, purchase for $860, our return for $60, gives us a net amount of $800 and we get to receive a discount of 3% on that which is $24. So that is what tells us that we owed them a total amount of $800. We got a discount of $24 and so we are going to give them $776. After the 13th, we've got an entry for the 14th of April, which is purchased tennis shirts and shorts from Lindsay Sportswear, $700, terms 210 net 60. So whenever we make a purchase, the entry is going to be a purchase to accounts payable. And again, we want to make sure that we're able to note down the company that we're talking about so it's a little bit easier for us to track. So for Lindsay and the conditions that they have given us, um from lindsay was 210 net 60 210 net 60. there we go so our purchase had a total amount of 700 dollars so 700 debit and 700 credit then the next entry after the 14th says on the 15th of april Received a cash refund of $50 from Volker Sports for damaged merchandise that was returned. Whenever we have a return and we are able to receive our um, uh, something in, in our cash refund against it. So this is from Volker Sports. Volker was a cash purchase and so our return will also be in cash. And this comes against a purchase, returns and allowances. Okay, and the amount of cash that we received for our return was $50. So 50 debit and 50 credit. And this purchase returns is Volker. We need that just to keep track, just in case. Now it's not a credit sale, so we know we won't need it, but force of habit. Um, on the 17th of April, paid freight on Lindsay Sportswear purchase. Whenever we pay freight and it is our a periodic inventory with a freight in credit to cash debit and so we paid freight worth $30 so $30 debit and $30 credit then on the 18th of April we have sold merchandise to members for $1,200 terms net 30 once again whenever we make a sale it's going to be accounts receivable to oh my apologies there we go accounts receivable to sales revenue okay so our accounts receivable in this case is how much money well, how much did we sell for sold merchandise members for twelve hundred dollars there we go and this is all sold to our customers on a net 30 condition that's it after the 18th we have on the 20th of april received $500 in cash from members in settlement of their account. So whenever we receive money from our members, that is an inflow of cash and a reduction in the accounts receivable. All right, um, and so the amount of money that we received was $500. There we go. After the 20th, on the 21st of April, Paid Lindsay Sportswear in full. Now, if we go back through our list, we see that we purchased from Lindsay on the 14th and we're going to be paying them on the 21st. That means we're going to be able to avail the discount. And when we identify this, our liability is decreasing. So that's an accounts payable uh, debit against a cash credit and a purchase discounts and allowances. A purchase discount actually sorry purchase discounts and because this payment is being made to Lindsay now let's see what our calculation is going to be so in this case the total amount that we owed Lindsay was $700 uh, do we have any returns to Lindsay no we do not so that's a good thing without any returns that means we're just gonna multiply by the amount of the discount that's 2% so 2% of $700 is going to be $14 so our discount is for $14 
Now, if we owe a total of 700 and we receive a discount of $14, that means that we will now have a cash payment of $686. Uh, after the 21st, we have an entry for the 27th of April, and on the 27th of April, we have granted an allowance of $25 to members in settlement. Uh, sorry, granted an allowance of $25 to members for tennis clothing that did not fit properly. Uh, when we give this allowance, essentially, this is a sales, returns, and allowances. And because it's against a credit sales, so that's an account receivable that is going to be decreasing. And the allowance was for $25, so 25 debit and 25 credit. And then on the 30th of April, received cash payments on account from members for $620. When we receive a cash payment, that's an inflow of cash and a decrease of accounts receivable. And so the amount of money that we received from our customers is $620. So 620 debit and 620 credit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, sums up all of our journal entries for question number 5-7A for merchandising entries under a periodic system. If there's any questions, please comment below.